You go? You ready? Okay. All right. So good afternoon, folks. Uh, my name is Mick Harrison. I'm an attorney and litigation director for the Lawyers Committee for 9-11 Inquiry. And with me is David Meiswinkle, who is the president of the board of the Lawyers Committee, Bob McElvain, a 9-11 family member, and longtime uh, advocate for 9-11 Truth, and Richard Gage, the president of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. And we do have an important announcement for you today. I'll give you the basics and let my colleagues add the details, and then we'll take some questions. So today, literally moments ago, we filed in the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia a seven-count federal complaint asking the federal court to order the Federal Bureau of Investigation to comply with an important federal mandate regarding 9-11. That federal mandate requires the FBI to conduct an external assessment of all 9-11 related evidence that was not considered by the original 9-11 Commission that was known to the FBI and to report that evidence and that assessment to Congress. In our research and investigation, and when I say ours, I mean the architects and engineers, the lawyers committee, and some associated family members, including Bob, we determined that there are at least seven categories of 9-11 related evidence that was not assessed by the new 9-11 Review Commission established by the FBI in, an, in a purported effort to satisfy this congressional mandate. So we are asking the federal court to order the FBI to fully comply with the mandate to go back to the drawing board and to assess this important evidence. Now, I'll give you the short version of what the evidence is that we're asking to be assessed, but before I do that, let me just make clear. This is a suit to compel a federal agency to perform a mandatory duty. I emphasize the word mandatory, non-discretionary. So Congress imposed this duty on the FBI, and the FBI failed to comply. So this lawsuit is ordering compliance, and the the seven categories of evidence that were focused on in this complaint, the first and, and the most extensive is the evidence of the controlled demolition of three World Trade Center towers on 9-11, the Twin Towers in Building 7, and you'll hear, hear from Mr. Gage here in a minute about more details of that evidence. The short version is, notwithstanding a decade of very public discussion of this evidence developed by I don't know how many chemists, physicists, architects, engineers, the FBI and its 2015 Review Commission completely ignored that evidence. You won't even see it mentioned in their 2015 report. Now remember what Congress required them to do, assess all, any evidence related to 9-11 and the attacks known to the FBI that was not assessed by the original commission. Now if you go back to 2004 and the Hamilton Keene Commission, you won't see any discussion of controlled demolition in that report. You also don't see it in the new 2015 Commission's report, which means that the FBI failed to comply with its mandate. Now, you might be wondering, how can we prove that the FBI knew of the controlled demolition evidence? And the short answer is, apart from the fact that Mr. Gage has been broadcasting it worldwide for about 10 to 15 12. years, 12 years, we actually have two documents would show that the FBI was informed of Richard Gage and his colleagues' work. One of them, the FBI actually says, you know, it's, it's very thorough work, and we're going to look at it. So that's the short version. Now, we're also talking about other evidence that was ignored by the new commission. In addition to the demolition evidence, some of you know that on 9-11, several individuals were arrested because they were observed celebrating the attacks on the Trade Center. And these folks who self-identified as Israelis were held in custody. They were interviewed by the FBI at some length, eventually were deported. But the FBI has extensive reports about this incident, and that evidence is not addressed in either the original commission or the new commission. So that's a second count. A third um, category of evidence that was ignored has to do with the Saudi support and other international support for the 9-11 terrorists, and that evidence is part of this lawsuit. We also are complaining 
and directing the federal court to require an assessment of evidence related to the videos from the Pentagon that no one has seen yet. We also want an assessment of the evidence of the plane parts that were recovered after the crashes. And last, it would be an analysis of the evidence related to phone calls, both cell phone calls and air calls from the airplanes on 9-11. So let me turn this over to my colleague, Dave Meiswinkel, and um, we'll go around and have everyone speak and then we'll take some questions. Dave? Uh, thank you, Mick. Uh, this is a very significant action here on, on behalf of the, uh, actually on behalf of the people of this country. Uh, it's symbolic that we are here in Pennsylvania Avenue and the Capitol is right down the street. And we're actually doing and uh, asking the uh, federal court to do what should have been done all along. And what we've been ever asking for is a, a, a thorough, proper, objective, honest investigation. Uh, we've done what we could to get a grand jury moving in New York City uh, with uh, what we say is uh, dispositive evidence of controlled demolition, pre-planted explosives and bombs in the buildings there. But this takes the action, at least of the Lawyers Committee, that's committed to transparency and accountability another step further. What we're doing now is we're opening up the process because these counts uh, transcend or move to some extent even beyond New York City. So the counts that Mick mentioned having to do with cell phone communications uh, and air phones, uh, they, they could be, uh, that's information that was, uh, should have been assessed and that was never considered by the original 9-11 Commission. Uh, this actually is evidence that would connect uh, or could connect uh, the various, uh, at least the uh, incident in, in Pennsylvania with United 93 and with the uh, incident allegedly with uh, flight, American Flight 77 that uh, allegedly hit the Pentagon, uh, those, uh, those telephone calls, along with the plane parts that Mick mentioned, uh, the uh, serial numbers on those plane parts are very indicative to identify what planes hit what buildings and uh, they so get a confirmation that this plane actually did hit this building. Uh, and uh, in particular in Washington at the Pentagon there is uh, a lot of questions regarding that, etc. in other areas also. So that is something that this is evidence that the, uh, the uh, certainly the FBI has uh, that, uh, that they were required to assess and that the 9-11 uh, the, uh, the Commission originally never considered and that these reports were never given to Congress, never been updated on this, these developments and this evidence, this is crucial evidence in addition to the cameras right here in Washington, D.C. on the Pentagon, uh, there are cameras that the public is not aware of. Uh, certainly the FBI would be aware of these cameras, and they, certainly the 9-11 Commission was never, uh, uh, never aware or made aware of the cameras and what the, whatever the footage is that it shows. So they would, were not able to really to, uh, to uh, consider that information or that evidence either. So what it's done now, this, this suit, and we, Mick also mentioned the Saudi action. He also mentioned the reference to the high fibers and there's some consideration as to how these people were, where they were at the time they were there, what they were doing there celebrating. Uh, and there's a lot of mystery around that. There are reports, we've read the reports, FBI reports, but there's no indication in any of the official uh, the, the narratives as far as the 9-11 Commission, they were aware of it or at least never considered it. So this is all very important evidence that starts to open up the process. What we've asked before is that this the law enforcement do what they're mandated to do. If they did what they if they did what they were supposed to do, I don't think we would be here at all. This crime would have been solved way back in 2001 when it happened. We wouldn't have had the uh, our constitutional rights uh, rolled back. We want to have uh, the, an incipient police state at our at our at our door knocking. And, and that's why it's really important to uh, address these crimes. Americans' heart and soul was lost that day. The country's constitution was hijacked that day. And what we want to do is get the constitution working like it's supposed to, allow the Bill of Rights to do what it's supposed to do, and that's protect us and to protect us against government. We're asking government to do their job. And as Mick said, this is a declaratory and injunctive relief we're asking for. It's just to say, judge, 
tell these agencies to do their job, their duty. That's what they're supposed to do. That's what they get paid to do. Now, Richard Gage is the foremost, uh, it, probably in the world, as reference to evidence at Ground Zero. So I'm going to turn that over to Richard and to Bob to talk about the uh, Ground Zero evidence. Thank you. There you go. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Mick. And, and thank you, Bob. Uh, we're going to be hearing from Bob uh, real quickly uh, because his son was killed, murdered at the Twin Towers on 9-11 by the explosions for which we have so much evidence before the towers collapsed and there's some indications that these explosions occurred before the planes, the plane even hit that particular building. Bob will discuss that. But as an architect of 30 years, I was shocked to learn that a third tower came down on 9-11 because I didn't hear anything about it from the American Institute of Architects, of which I'm one of the 80,000 members. I didn't know that there were explosions that were heard before this building came down, heard by witnesses and documented on camera. Documented on camera, which the FBI saw and acknowledged in this letter that they wrote Harold Save in Florida because he had the insight to submit that first documentary of ours called 9-11 blueprint for truth in which we documented all of this evidence and the assistant director counterterrorism division at the FBI was forwarded that DVD by Mueller the director of the FBI at the time and Michael Heinbach says this letter is in response to your correspondence dated November 7, 2008, to Director Robert S. Mueller III, in which you urged the FBI to consider the work of Mr. Richard Gage, founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth, and his supporters in the ongoing federal investigation into the World Trade Center attacks. The director's office forwarded your letter to the Counterterrorism Division for direct response to you. First, let me thank you for offering to provide information to the United States government. Well, we have been doing that now for 12 years without success. So we're seizing the opportunity to take legal action against the FBI. Back to the letter. First, let me thank you for offering to provide this information. The FBI receives, uh, this information the FBI receives from concerned individuals is critical to its mission of protecting the U.S. and its citizens against terrorism. So they're acknowledging that this is critical information in writing. As with all cases, the FBI will continue to examine the 9-11 investigation from every angle as new evidence develops, utilizing all leads available. Mr. Gage presents an interesting theory. We're presenting facts, by the way, but they like to call these theories. But he goes on. Backed by thorough research and analysis, so they've already done the assessment which was not reported to the 9-11 Review Commission. So all we want them to do is report that assessment in more detail as mandated by Congress. Backed by thorough research and analysis, the case agents in charge of the investigation will undoubtedly review all relevant information before making an unbiased decision. So this is what we're expecting them to do, what Congress mandated and what they've actually agreed in writing to do. Now, what did that evidence include? It included the third skyscraper to collapse on 9-11, a 47-story skyscraper that drops like a rock at free fall acceleration, as fast as a bowling ball falling down from the sky 
after witnesses hear explosions. The aftermath reveals the evidence of thermite incendiaries, pools of molten iron. We haven't used molten iron for 100 years in our skyscrapers. So how does it get to be iron? Where did that come from? How did it get to be molten, 2,800 degrees? NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, says that the temperatures were only uh, of office fires. They only burned 20 minutes in a given area. So they couldn't have caused the thermal expansion of the, which NIST uh, claims is the cause of the initiation of collapse. More to the point, they couldn't have melted the steel. But steel melted. More accurately, iron melted. Where did that come from? Where did the sulfur come from? That FEMA, in their Appendix C of their May 2002 report, says hot sulfur corrosion attack on the steel of World Trade Center 7 and the Twin Towers. Where does that come from? Where does the sulfur come from? Well, thermite is an incendiary used by the military to cut through steel like a hot knife through butter. So, we've got the evidence of thermite incendiaries in the form of red-gray chip, trip, chips throughout the World Trade Center. We have the evidence of incendiaries, thermite particularly, in the form of previously molten iron microspheres, billions of them. Ten tons of this material found is the residue of thermite. The U.S. Geological Survey doesn't tell us where these came from. The, but they could only have come from these red-gray chips, which are also found, about 10 tons of that material, in, in red on one side, gray on the other. They're attracted by a magnet. They're for, examined by X-ray energy dispersive spectroscopy and a nuclear microscope to find the nanoparticles of iron oxide and aluminum powders comprising these. The very sophisticated material found only in the most advanced defense contracting laboratories. All of this information and a lot more in two hours of documentary was presented to the FBI. And they squashed it. So we're very fortunate to have this opportunity 18 years later to get this evidence into the record. And that's no to, that is more important to no one more than Bob McElvain, who's here with us. As I mentioned, his son Bobby was killed that day. And Bob has been relentless for more than 18 years in trying to seek justice, not just for his son, but for all the victims and their family members that died on 9-11. Bob? Uh, I don't know if anyone's, has anyone seen Silent Witness on uh, Netflix? It's an English show, great show. Pathologists go to a murder scene and they look at the body, then go in for a post-mortem. And they find and they get very involved in the investigation of the murder or whatever happened, whether or not it was a murder or an accident and so forth and so on. Well, Bobby's like a silent witness. It's a legal show, it's a real silent witness. And it's written with on for like uh, years and years and years. A show I've ever seen. That's why I always think about it when I watch it. Well, Bobby, at first, you know, we, we got a body when we that week, Bobby was found minutes after the towers were hit and was taken and he had a post-mortem done on Tuesday, Tuesday morning, on First Street. Of course, I never, I didn't have the guts to look at the body. They, they told me not to. I really regret that I did because the, the injuries were just so bad. It, it was a, I not know what it was. But he took a blast to here and here. I'm sorry. But I, I really never, you know, again, looked into that. But with the, the, with all this stuff that is coming out, especially about the seismic threat, uh, readings up at Columbia University, 
And Bobby didn't work at the towers. He worked at Merrill Lynch, which was just across uh, West Street. So no one could, now we, there must have been a hundred phone calls made to Bobby, so he had his phone. People will say, well, how do you know he wasn't on the 106th floor? Well, if he was on the 106th floor, I don't think he died instantly. And of course, or, and many, many people say, well, did he jump? You know, I said, no, it's impossible because we called him at least a hundred times. I mean, friends, neighbors, everyone was calling about, you know, what was happening. And no one got a hold, no, no one got a hold of him. So through the years, but anyway, you know, I, that's what I've been doing is investigating, finding out what happened to him, and of course who did it. Now his injuries, you know, I don't want to go into it, but he took a, a huge blast to the head and the chest. It almost looks like someone had a couple shotguns hitting him with a shotgun. And he died instantly. And he didn't have burns on him. He had, and this is the way it was explained to me. He was hit and driven back, God knows how far. I never found the nurse. I think I know who she is, but I think she's so messed up she can't do anything anymore. But she found him and took him to the morgue. The ambulance took him to the morgue. But anyway, so he was, I don't know how many feet away, or the, the <coughs> detonation, I don't know how many feet away he was. But anyway, he had post-mortem, or not post-mortem burns, but he had, yeah, post-mortem burns. In other words, he was hit by a big blast and then the heat, the detonation, the heat follows that. So then he put some heat you know, on his legs and so forth and so on. I had pictures of that. But my whole thing is, and, and it's important to me, and I, you know, I've gone around the world talking about this, it eliminates the Muslims in this. I don't, you know, I don't care what people say about the Muslims and the planes and so forth and so on, but I'm 100% sure Bobby died before the planes hit. So unless we can prove that Muslims put those bombs or detonations in there in the towers, then they're off the hook as far as my son's death is concerned. I have no beef against Muslims. You can't prove to me Muslims have anything to do with them. I'm not saying Muslims weren't on the play, I don't know. But the thing is, that's why I feel Bobby is a silent witness. I feel good about it. And what's happening today is the fact that these people are now talking beyond what Richard's done is phenomenal. She's convinced my mother, or my mother, my wife, that something happened on 9-11. She didn't want anything to do with it. I don't blame her. But she went, saw uh, Richard's movie, and she's on board. My sister calls me. She's on board. But then we have to take it a step further. And what they're bringing in is in the complaint, you know, they're talking about the swords. They're talking about different things that happened on 9-11 that haven't been answered. And I remember being down here in 2002 with the Jersey girls, and we went to see Muller. And he just ignored us. You know, they were asking the same questions at the, in this complaint. What, what about the swords? What about this? What about that? And he just ignored us. He says, there's nothing to see. Well, I know. I went berserk. I was so <laughs> upset. So what I've done over the years, I read history. That's all I do is read history. And it makes me feel, you know, it's, it's almost impossible to say, can our country do something like that? It really is. People can't put their hands on it. Well, if you read history, you can see that things like this happen all the time. Sometimes I feel guilty complaining about my son being lost when the millions upon millions, hundreds of millions of people have died in a century for no damn reason whatsoever. And that's what people have to realize. This is what empires do. The British Empire did that forever. And we've taken up that mantle. I'm not blaming this one specific country or anything. But that's why I say Bobby is a silent witness. The fact that just that fact alone, that he did not die by the hands of Muslims, then we got a big time problem. Who in the hell put those explosions in there, or detonations in there? And I stand by that. And I can go to court, but this coming up is monumental because now other people are talking about deep state. Now there are other people are talking about other things that are happening in the world. Talking about 9-11. And there are, you know, I've, got, I've been contacted by millions upon millions of people around the world that are all on board. But they just don't have the information. And a lot of people have jumped on the bandwagon as far as the destruction of the towers, but they have to go further than that. They really have, you have to work hard. You really have to work hard. And I think this is provide the impetus to do that. So that's why I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, could, 
Could you tell us about the uh, Bobby McIlvain Act and what can people do to help this process? Uh, that's one question. We also happen to be in front of the museum, a kind of tabernacle of journalism. They have a 9-11 exhibit. But what can ordinary people seeing this do? And maybe several people can answer that. Repeat the question. Sorry, repeat the question. Uh, well, the question was, what, what can people do that look into this? What can they do to bring this out into the public, to bring it out amongst their friends, to bring it out in the newspapers? I don't know. It, it's, I, I have had people that have tried this, and they put all the 9-11 family members. How many are out there now? They've been trying. What about the Jersey girls? Now, you could have tried harder than them to bring this to fruition. And then they just got blasted and culture just crucified him on TV. So pulling your congressman is a very important thing. And if you get millions of congressmen, gets millions and millions of calls. But they're afraid to touch this with a 10-foot pole. So I think reading. Get, get, become informed about what happened. Really, I, I think that's the most important thing, because then you can talk to someone about it. But other than that, it's very difficult. You know, you can jump on the, you know, uh, the architects and engineers, but then that will, you know, that's a good start for them. And, and regarding the Bobby McIlvain Act, uh, here is draft legislation, which Bob McIlvain sponsored for us in many ways, uh, to, uh, to, to bring to Congress uh, legislation that forces an investigation into the destruction of all three World Trade Center skyscrapers on 9-11. So we have now taken this act and the petition signed by 3,000 architects and engineers. By the way, if 3,000 architects and engineers wrote you a letter saying your house was in danger of collapse, would you listen to them? Yeah. So we expect to be listened to. But the political climate is tough. And it continues to be tough, even, even with President Trump in office. We are not getting the disclosures that we really need to have. But we're relentless. I mean, this group has been at this for more than a decade, and two decades almost for many in the 9-11 truth movement. But we expect either the House or Senate to form a select committee to investigate this, or eventually, as more truth comes out, as people tire of the 9-11 wars, which President Trump seems to be continuing, um, we, and Obama continued after Bush before him, um, we expect that the American people will eventually wake up and tire of this, maybe because some of this information actually gets out in court uh, through the FBI lawsuit that we filed today. Maybe uh, through the U.S. attorney's promise to impanel a grand jury to investigate these crimes, this crime of the century, which has instigated a $6.5 trillion war on terror, which continues this is an ongoing issue. It's not a historical, obsolete piece of, of grave, um, uh, uh, the, the, I mean, people try to, to minimize this. It couldn't be more relevant for today's geopolitical climate. And that's why we've submitted this lawsuit. And I'll bet Mick and Dave have more to share about that. Sure. So in terms of what folks can do, let me state the obvious. You can go to Architects and Engineers website. You can make a donation that would help us prosecute this lawsuit. You can go to the Lawyers Committee uh, for 9-11 Inquiries website, lcfor911.org. Make a donation. You can also volunteer your time if you have time to help. Uh, in addition to those obvious steps, um, I think Bob McIlvain is right that educating yourself is a huge step, a huge first step. And then the next step would be educating your congressperson. And let me point out what may not be obvious here is this lawsuit is basically doing Congress's work for them. 
keep in mind, what we're suing on here is a congressional mandate to the FBI. We're forcing the FBI to do what Congress told them to do. So we're helping Congress achieve the goal that Congress laid out, which is assessment of all the 9-11 evidence. Now, when Richard says it's still relevant, you know, Congress considers it still relevant. Keep in mind, this new mandate was 2014. Okay, that was 13 years after 9-11, and Congress wanted to know from its FBI the current assessment of all the new evidence. And they didn't get that from their FBI. And that's why we're suing, to make sure that Congress is informed of this new evidence, gets the assessment of the FBI and its external commission on that new evidence, and report it to Congress. And when they report it to Congress, we're going to get it. So this is basically a right to know suit. It's not about trying to prove one theory or another about what happened on 9-11. It's about informing all of us and the Congress on all the evidence available so we can all make up our own minds and then decide what to do. Dave? In my life, I've uh, taken the oath three times, basically, to protect and defend the Constitution. I did that as a soldier, United States Army. I did it as a policeman, and I did it as an attorney. Now, I speak right here as just myself. I don't want to say this is what, what the Lawyers Committee would say, but this is what I say, at least in my assessment, is that there has been, since 9-11, a dumbing down intentionally by the media, the Americans' perspectives. And thank God for alternative media that have kept the truth alive and have left, have left uh, investigative journalism as something that is a true vocation and an honorable uh, occupation that uh, presently, the, uh, as Mick said, and as Richard said, and as Bob said, uh, education is, is very important, is how you educate yourself. The uh, Lawyers Committee website, the Architects and Engineers website are key areas to go, lc4911truth.org, or uh, uh, lc4911.org, or ae911truth.org our excellent sources, but there's a, a realization too in sort of esoteric sciences they talk about your third eye that's in the middle of your forehead that sort of could be being calcified with the junk media that we receive. We have to clear out that third eye, that's our eye that allows us to dream, to have visions, to have insights, to step it beyond where we are and to get out of this muck and mire. So it needs a real assessment of what we are as an American, where we're going, the direction. And 9-11 is the focal point where things really started getting bad. So we have to go back, find out what happened there, prosecute the people that were responsible, reclaim our Constitution and Bill of Rights, and be the Americans that we all envision ourselves to be and should be, and don't let anyone change that, any political party, any lobby, any interest, special interest, but let's all be American and love our freedom, and, and let's be honorable to our neighbors in the world and truly, truly be that beacon of light that the, the world craves and is disappointed the United States is not doing what we all believe it should be doing. Let's step out. And this is an action to do that. We're stepping out. There's more actions to come. But this is a very important uh, opportunity now to get the courts to order the Federal Bureau of Investigation to do what they're supposed to do. Thank you very much. Uh, this building, the museum, is where five years ago uh, the, uh, there was an anniversary of the 9-11 Commission meeting right upstairs, and most of their focus was on defense contracts and improved security. Um, they rented the, uh, the building, but what uh, significance do you place uh, that you're in front of the museum of the news industry that uh, uh, hosted this 9-11 meeting five years ago? I believe they rented uh, the space, but uh, it's right. still right here. Well, let me add my thoughts and I'll pass it around for folks. The, the immediate thought for me is that 
and, th and this is true for the 9-11 Review Commission too, what they focused on in their report wasn't the new evidence that would help us really understand what happened on 9-11, who was responsible, and why. What they focused on was fine-tuning the FBI, the CIA, improving the intelligence community and their procedures. And, and here's the problem with that. Until we know who was responsible for this crime of the century and exactly how they accomplished it and what their purposes were, none of this other fine-tuning of intelligence agencies means a damn. Because until you get to the bottom of you know, who was responsible and you put those folks in jail, they're still out there doing their thing. And we're not protected, and we're never going to be protected until we get the truth out. Uh, well, listen, the irony is that we are here, to answer your question, Andrew, that we are in front of a, uh, a building that would, you would think that uh, the freedom of the press and truth would, would be very significant. But as we've seen, as I mentioned before, there seems to be a dumbing down of the news. And uh, I get my news, for the most part, through alternative media. And, uh, and, and and media sort of like Jason Goodman's media and other media where they really uh, use a Socratic method and they have a dialogue and they uh, go back and forth to try to get to the truth. And that's what we're doing and that's what Mick said. And, and really important, underline it, the people that committed these crimes are still at large. They're still at large. And they will be encouraged to do more things if they're not brought to justice. So an example has to be set to protect all of us. And as we get older with kids and grandkids, we're leaving them this heritage, either one of freedom or one of the exact opposite. So I would say that uh, the truth is what we're after. And, uh, and, uh, and here in front of this building, unfortunately, that's not their primary uh, mission is to, to give us the truth. And that's what our lawsuit is all about. Well, I, I made, I'd say, 99% of the 9-11 Commission hearings, and it was a disgrace, and they're all disgrace. Yet they admitted, they admitted that it was a sham. They didn't have the opportunity to do what they're going to do. But then to have these commissioners here, you know, they're cowards. I mean, they, they came out. Uh, Hamilton came out and said it was a sham. Max Cleland, you know, it was just, uh, I, people would leave there so angry. You know, you, you talk to the press and you try to be civil, but sometimes it's so difficult to be civil because you know they were just stalling. You know, there was no, you know, there's just everyone was lying. I hate to get back to Mahler, but every, you know, he come up there, he stands up there and lies. Everybody was lying. There was no subpoenas. They, you know, the, the main thing is you got five minutes to interview a, a, a witness, and that's all they would get. You can't go anywhere with that five minutes. So for these people to be here talking about the defense industry spending more money, you know, they sold out and they, you know, I, maybe some of them were trying to do their job. I know Max Cleland was, Curry, I think he was, but they didn't have a chance. I would do it in there. I just, I would lose my temper beyond imagination, but finally it was amazing how suddenly all the news people were over with you because they, I was just so ticked off. And the fact that they were here doing that, you know, if I were here, I'd be out here demonstrating. And I would call them sons of bitches as they walked out the door. They're cowards. They absolutely are cowards. They, they live by the system, and the system is making them rich. And they know what happened on 9-11. Any idiot knows what happened. They would know it, but they're not even qualified to be idiots. They're beyond that. So that's my feeling about those idiots. John Farmer, the attorney of the 9-11 Commission, wrote a book. And in that book, at some point there was a decision not to tell the people, the American people, the truth about 9-11. Other commissioners, in fact I believe it was uh, Bob Kerry, um, said uh, that they were set up to fail. That alone is reason enough to demand a new investigation of 9-11, let alone all the evidence that we've been talking about here. Refer to David Ray Griffin, 9-11 Commission, Omissions and Distortions. Extraordinary work. Other questions? 
maybe a last one for me. There was a reference to a meeting with Bob Mueller as FBI director. Who was in that meeting, and when and where was it? Well, they, uh, it was the Jersey Girls. I mean, the Jersey Girls, I don't know how many people know the Jersey Girls, but they were, they were out front. And I just sort of was behind them watching. But, you know, they would have events, I'd be there. Well, it was after uh, one of the commission hearings, they wanted to see Mueller. So he actually came to the FBI building. I don't, I don't know the exact date. I, you know, I remember uh, John Judge, who was very involved in 9-11. And uh, he said, well, let's go over to see him. So I just sort of walked in the back door and the Jersey girls were asking all the questions. And, uh, and then it just ended abruptly. You know, every question they threw at him, he just wouldn't answer it. And it, to me, it was very slow. And I lost my temper. I went after him. I, I don't know what I would have done if I got to him, but I lost my temper. And the uh, FBI agents were very nice and just grabbed me. And uh, it started right there. He wouldn't give any answers. It was a cover up from the beginning. Well, he's in the news. Uh, why, why do you think he did it? Is there a higher power? Could he have, it's speculation, but could he have answered questions or what is your of sense? He could, of course, of course he, he knows exactly what happened. You know, I go back. To me, all this starts with Iran Contra. He was there when they, you know, they got pardons. You know, these people should have been put in jail for the rest of their life. And there, some of these people are in the administration right now. Well, he was, that's what he does. He cover up up things. He was, what, this year, I don't know exactly what he was. A fixer. Yeah, he's a fixer. Well, when did he come to this story after 9-11? What, two days after 9-11? I don't know exactly what it was, but this is his job. One week prior. Well, yeah, one week prior, was it? Yeah, I know. He, you know, so then suddenly he's the man. We're going to take his information? I mean, it was ridiculous. So hearing, hearing all these people in the, in the commission hearings, and then, you know, and then the, you know, again, I went, the Jersey girls, they had asked for it, and I just popped in on my own. I wasn't with them, and uh, it was just crazy. Mueller, crazy. Mueller, excuse me, guys. Mueller said in a group in San Francisco that the terrorists were so good that they didn't leave a shred of evidence. <laughs> yeah. Mueller said uh, in a group in, to a group in San Francisco that the terrorists were so good that uh, they didn't leave a shred of evidence. That's cute. Except his passport that flew out the window. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. That they failed. Um, so I'd like to thank everybody for coming uh, to the press conference today, uh, uh, most especially the attorneys who worked so hard, uh, Dave Meiswinkle and, and Mick Harrison of the Lawyers Committee for 9-11 Inquiry. Again, you can help uh, a lot, because uh, the, the filing of this lawsuit is just the beginning. They put a lot of work into this without being uh, reimbursed. So we not only are raising funds for the work that's been done, because um, they, I don't know how they paid their rent for the last uh, uh, so many uh, months of, of work on this, but for all the work that has yet to come, uh, preparing for the expected motion to dismiss, there's a whole set of legal hoops that we will be put through. It takes uh, hundreds of hours to, to, to do this work. And I want to encourage everybody today to go to lc4911.org. That's LC, Lawyers Committee, for for-911.org or ae911truth.org and make your donation to this joint effort uh, so that we can make sure that we're equipped to do in the battle, the legal battles to come. It's a lot of work, folks. Again, thanks so much. Do you want to close out, Mick? Well, just a quick note. First of all, I have to say I'm proud to represent Richard and his organization and Bob McElvain and the Lawyers Committee in this lawsuit. And as a lawyer, I expect to win it. You might be surprised to hear that. Not every 9-11 litigation that's been tried in the past for citizens has had success. This one I expect to win, and for a very simple reason. Uh, all this evidence we're talking about is either in the hands of the FBI, which is true for, I think, five of the six categories, and the other category that Richard mentioned, they've acknowledged their awareness of the work of the architects and engineers and their uh, plan to review it. So all we have to prove to win this case is that the evidence is 9-11 related, that the FBI knew about it, that the original 9-11 commission, commission did not uh, consider it, and that the new commission did not assess it. And I can tell you, if you read our complaint, black and white, 
on all four of those points for all seven of these towns. We should win each one of these. So uh, this is not a uh, symbolic action. We expect to win it. We expect it to result in a new assessment of evidence to be given to Congress. And by doing that, we expect the American public to be better informed. So I appreciate your, your attention. Dave, do you have a close? Yes, yeah. Where can people find that complaint? Uh, the complaint will be posted on the Lawyers Committee's website. Uh, AE may post it, I don't know. Um, if you have trouble finding it, you know, contact me and I'll get it to you. Uh, but it should be on our website. Uh, uh, this is an important step and it's not gonna be our last step. Uh, we're so happy that you're covering this and uh, we hope that more and more people find out what our experience is, is that when people seem to be ready for this information now, perhaps in the past they weren't. So as we proceed forward, we think there will be more attention paid to it. And we really are optimistic that there will be some kind of resolution positive in the long run, not only in this suit, but in further actions to come. So th again, thank you, keep the faith, and let's get America back. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Bob, we should, we should, should get Bob here. All right, all right. Did you have something else? Yeah. No, no, I'm yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. All right, thanks. Awesome. Okay. Yeah.